Okay, friends, I am lapping up a storm because I almost had a major catastrophe as I was working on this little Facebook Live today. Uh, one of the things I've been saying a lot since this interesting situation over the last few weeks is that one of the challenges uh, that I have a growth opportunity in is technical issues. So, you know, a few weeks ago I recorded a Facebook Live and I was sideways and I caught that and then this time I was about to be sideways again but I was able to fix it, so I am learning. As well as then I had hit something at the bottom and it gave me a mustache and funny eyebrows. So I almost went live with a mustache and funny eyebrows and I was hitting everything on my phone to make it go away. So. Uh, one of the things we always laugh, when we look at other people, we think everybody else has it all figured out. And only we know that we don't have it all figured out. And I see Dave Gimbrell, a dear friend of mine, a member of the John Maxwell team, and just a genius when it comes to technical uh, social media marketing. And so, uh, he, I always think he has it all figured out and I learned so much by being a part of his tribe and watching him on a regular basis. But this week, boy, I had to, I had to master Zoom uh, in a short amount of time because I can't even tell you how many Zoom meetings I had this week. So just for fun, why don't you tell me below how many Zoom meetings you had this week? And I'm so grateful for the consistency of my jazzercise instructor, Jennifer. She often tunes in to our little encouraging conversations. And she had a Zoom call for our jazzercise class. So even though we can't meet in person, uh, we have jazzercise on demand, which has been really helpful. But it was, I miss my ladies and I miss my instructors. And I bet there's lots of people that you miss too. And so we're going to talk about that for a little bit. A whole point of my conversation today is to talk about resilience. What does it mean to be resilient? You know, so many times when we're in the middle of a, of a challenging time, and, and that's the only way that I can describe the situation that we're in now, we've completed three weeks with a lot of people working virtually from home, and a lot of we social people don't like working from home. We like seeing people. We like connecting to each other. Now, I also have some friends who, uh, colleagues of mine at PBS Charlotte, who are introverts, who are sort of really, uh, not that they like the situation, but working from home isn't the worst thing in the world for them. Uh, but for those of us who are type A personalities, uh, who absolutely are people who thrive being around people, it's tough for us. Like my friend Keith Ryan. I think you're a people person too, Keith, aren't you? Would you call yourself an introvert or an extrovert? I know, everyone who knows me uh, knows that I'm an extrovert. But uh, hard to imagine that when I was a kid, I was shy, I was super shy. So it's amazing how life just changes and, and takes us on a different route. I wanna talk again about resilience tonight and what does it mean to be resilient? You know, tell me your definition of resilience below. I know, oh, my friend Keith Ryan from the Sharp House in Statesville says he's a closet introvert. Very, very interesting. Oh, you see my little dog, Maxime. She had a spa day before they shut down all uh, doggy grooming places. And so that was very important. She always likes, I think she's an extrovert. She always likes finding her way in the back of the camera when I'm sharing a little. I know it is also not the first Sunday of the month, which is usually when we do these, but hey, crazy times call for a little extra encouragement, I thought. And so that's why we're here to talk about resilience. And I wanna say, you know, resilience is really just how we bounce back from difficult circumstances. Now, you can think back in your life, you've probably had a list of difficult circumstances, as I have, as everyone on earth has. But I will admit that these circumstances are way different than anything else I've seen in my 52 year life. So one of the things we wanna think about, I've talked a lot about trying to fight the fear that comes. And sometimes it's from watching the media and reading news articles and, and just watching the count of how many people have been infected with this virus, you know, and just seeing it go up like a, like a ticker tape on the bottom of our screens is really hard to watch. And so I really do try to tune out 
uh, as much as I can without being completely oblivious to what's going on. Just trying to touch base multiple times a day, read the headlines and move on to try and be productive in life, to try and be a resource that encourages people and gives people the ability to be effective and to focus on you know, what we have going for us. Because even though these are very difficult times and I, my heart breaks for those who have been uh, negatively impacted, whether with the virus or because of losing jobs because of this situation, and I know that these are really, really difficult times. But we can encourage each other along the way. Wanya Lucas, she leads wonderful Atlanta PBS, and I'm so just honored to call her my friend. She's a genius of a woman with great time and talent. And so we're talking about resilience, we're talking about focusing, we're talking about thinking of times in the past where we had difficult times, and at one point or another they ended, and we got we got on with our lives. You know, holding on to hope is such an important part and realizing that things will get better at some point. And so you've got to, if you let yourself become negative and you spiral down, you know, that really is not a tool of resiliency. You know, talking about fear, you know, you don't want fear to take over your life. If you're not, if you don't have little tendencies of being afraid or scared, I don't think you're human right now because there certainly is a lot happening in our world that makes us a little fearful. But here's something to think about. Fear, if you're driving your car, and we don't drive a lot these days, but if you're driving your car, fear can be in the back seat, but you can't let fear be the driver. You know, I heard that today actually listening to a sermon uh, from my pastor at Elevation Church, Pastor Stephen Furtick, so I don't want to take credit for that one, but boy, do I love that. Fear's, fear's around during these difficult times, but let's make sure to push it in the back seat and not let it drive. Not let it drive us or take over us. Other things to think about related to fear, you know, don't give in to despair. You know, think about the positive. Be, have, exercise that attitude of gratitude. Don't minimize the suffering of others. You know, you've got to realize that, you know, if you're lucky enough that you haven't been impacted by this, congratulations. But what can you do to help someone else, perhaps, who has? You know, you just, you have to be able to be aware of what's going on around us without succumbing to what's going on around us from the issue of fear. You know, here are some tips. Do something special for someone else. You know, when you, what is it you can do? Can you visit a neighbor? Can you, you know, our office manager, Linda, did a great job. Uh, one of the businesses that I want to give a shout out to is, uh, am I going to say it right? Cater's Choice? I'm not saying it is exactly right. But they, uh, they used to be in the catering business for office events and big, huge events. But now they've sort of changed their... Uh, Waiter's Choice, it's called. Thank you. I'm grateful that came to my mind. Waiter's Choice is a wonderful catering company that used to cater big events all over the Carolinas. And as things have shut down and they haven't been able to get out, they have modified their business that they're doing at-home meal deliveries, which is genius. And our office manager, Linda, not only got one for herself, but she got one for a neighbor. And so it's a great thing if you live in the Carolinas, anywhere around Charlotte or South Carolina, Fort Mill, Rock Hill area, Waiter's Choice is doing home deliveries at no additional charge. And you can get four meals for, I think it's $25. So just a little shout out to a local, a local business trying to adapt, trying to innovate, trying to change its way, trying to focus on what it has control over, even though it's lost control over so many things like so many of us have. But how does this how can this lead to innovation? How can this lead to adaptation? How can, this, how can we come out stronger on the other side? That's a part of resilience. Being able to take action and change some things, things that we don't have control over. You know, other things that you wanna think about. You wanna practice both social distancing as well as virtual connecting. And I really liked that phrase when I read it, learning about resiliency. Practicing social distancing, but virtual connecting. So I know, and I wish I had bought uh, stock in Zoom a month ago, uh, because it is certainly soaring, but it's a great tool that's helping a lot of people stay connected. But now here is a risk of this connecting. So uh, I, I told you, I mentioned, I sat on many Zoom calls this week. 
and uh, there was a, a Zoom happy hours on Friday that I was a part of, and I had a Zoom virtual lunch with my team, and then, but I heard from some folks, I heard someone say, oh, those, that makes me feel bad because my work area isn't as nice as some other people's work area. And so that virtual connecting sometimes has its, has its setbacks as well that we need to figure out. And again, most importantly during these difficult times, we need to not compare ourselves to others. It doesn't matter what your space is like. If you have a good roof over your head and you're healthy right now, truly that is something to be grateful for. But yet, I do understand that social media in general is a comparison, a comparison game. And so we want to be cognizant of that uh, often. I don't have an office in my house because I, until now, the last three weeks, I never worked at home. So I had put pictures on that it was my love seat that had my laptop, my iPad, my iPhone, and a notebook. And often I would have a blanket over my legs because it was chilly earlier in the week and the dog would sit at my feet. And so it wasn't anything fancy at all, but it was comfortable and I'm grateful that I'm safe and I'm grateful that I, I still have a job and I'm able to work from home and I'm able to connect with all of you. So uh, our friend, I have another friend, Texas Roadhouse has adopted, uh, adapted to curbside fundraisers. That's another great resource. So thanks for sharing that, Peggy. And uh, you can leave me, leave tons of comments of ways that you see people adapting and making a difference. Because adapting is a huge part of resiliency. We as a nation, we as Americans, it's one of the things that I think we do so incredibly well. We are so very resilient. And I know you're resilient too. So we're talking about practicing social distancing, but virtual connecting. We're talking about doing something special for someone else so that it gets our mind off of our own situation and we can think about others. We're talking about taking action, whether that's an adaptation, if you're able to adapt your business, if you're able to innovate, if you're able to do new and different things. You know, one of the other things we're doing at PBS Charlotte, we had several screenings planned for this spring where we have viewers come and connect and, and preview programs. Well, we are trying our very first virtual screening, and I am hopeful that all the folks in this area will tune in so that we can connect to each other. It's on Ken Burns' new program, The Gene, and we can learn a little bit about that and be a part of a community, a gathering with social distancing, but virtual connecting, and that's a pretty exciting thing. You know, what else? We're talking about fear often prevents us from thinking clearly. So we talked about making sure that fear was in the back seat and not the driver's seat earlier, but you've really got to be able to, you know, remember when you were a kid, and I'm old enough to say it was before uh, safety belts, and your mom or dad would be driving and all of a sudden they might hit something and they do that to you to keep you safe, to keep you, they were, the arm was the seat belt. Well, here's what I'm going to say. If you catch fear coming out of the back seat, give it one of those arms. Not to keep it safe in the front seat with you, but to just kind of throw it in the back seat again because it is around us. We need to be aware, but we need to not let it overtake us and control us because we have these resilient tools at our hands. And when we focus on other people, it often makes our own personal situation feel not so bad. And so we need to focus on what we have. We need to help others because there are so many others suffering right now. We don't need to minimize what others are going through. You know, simply again, exercise that attitude of gratitude. If you're in a good situation right now, that's fantastic. So that means you can help some others. And it doesn't have to be big. Here's the other thing that I've noticed. In our neighborhood, everyone is working on their lawns. And I think maybe one of the big economic winners in this is, is Lowe's and Home Depot because uh, lots of people are getting extra home projects done during this time. And I am very grateful to my husband who has spent almost eight hours a day uh, the past couple of weeks working on our lawn because we had a whole lot of weeds last year and uh, not a lot of grass. And there's a whole lot more grass there this year and I'm grateful for his hard work as uh, he's a professional photographer, but things aren't so great for professional photographers right now. It's kind of the last thing on anybody's mind. Uh, but he's finding a way to be productive and finding a way to help our family and finding a way to 
uh, make a positive impact on our home. And it's so nice to see green grass out there. And the backyard used to be a whole bunch of dirt last year, and now it's pretty green grass. So again, it's just a simple thing. But what do you have that is making your life happier these days? I had another friend tell me uh, that she was happy for the slower, the slower moments. You know, the fact that the whole family was at home and that's something that doesn't, hadn't happened in their life and she's from Alabama. And uh, her husband's often at work and she stays at home with the three children, but it was nice to have dad around a lot too. And so what is it? And my friend Lisa from Houston Public Media had some questions today that she shared on Facebook Live during a walk that what is it of this time that might be a benefit that you want to continue moving forward. And I think that ability to connect with family is sort of one of the things that that I'm, I'm thinking about, but it is still really hard to have that new normal of how to have my son working on his college uh, assignments in his room. He's got almost a little office there having my husband uh, working, whether it's out in the yard or in his area and having me work and constantly being on the phone or on a Zoom call. You know, it's, it's almost like the house has more hubbub than it ever had. And it is sometimes hard to get back to that peacefulness of just being in the family and not just running almost the equivalent of three different businesses out of our home. But you know what, I am so grateful to have my Clemson University freshman home with me and he's safe. And I'm happy to have a healthy husband who cares and is safe. And I'm happy to have toilet paper. <laughs> And I'm happy to have food. Uh, I'm not a very good cook. My husband's much better at it than I am. But uh, I confess to getting a little tired of eating at home. But boy, we just that's when we just got to tell ourselves how lucky we are to have food to eat in these difficult times. So my friends, we talked about resiliency. I hope that those tips help you be more resilient and realize that this too will pass. It will not last forever. Soon it'll be in our rear view mirror. And how will we be better because of it? I know that may sound really hard, but I tried to give the example of businesses innovating and providing services to uh, help with at-home learning for schools. Uh, our public television station from 3.30 in the morning, I'm sorry, 7.30 in the morning till 3.30 in the afternoon is all at-home learning. And we're really grateful, all different age groups from preschool to lower elementary, middle school, and high school, there's something there for everyone tied to both North and South Carolina state standards. And there is a website for any teachers out there, and you don't even have to be in our area to be able to use it. It's called wtvi.pbslearningmedia.org. There's over 100,000 digital resources there to help you do at-home learning, whether you're a teacher or a parent or a caregiver who just needs an extra tool this time. I hope that tool will help you. Please leave me some comments about how you're being resilient or how you're helping others or how your business has innovated during this difficult time. I'm so grateful though for this opportunity. You know I'm a connector and I love to connect to you. And so Facebook Live is usually only my first Sunday of the month, but I've been doing it a little more during, during these challenging times because my whole goal is just hopefully to offer you some encouragement. Now, if you haven't looked back, I want to point out something I have on my Facebook page uh, was an interview with a friend from Northern Italy, my friend Greg Storch, and I did about a 20, 25 minute interview on Zoom, uh, and he's in the heart of some of the difficult areas, but he is so optimistic and so positive, and I really think that you will benefit from that interview. And I have a special guest that will join me next week. A special guest that will join me next week. Okay, the kids just came downstairs. That was that noise. Uh, and my friend Chris Stecklin will join us next week. Some tips and some encouragement and some other resources to help you. You know, now is the time. What can we learn to grow ourselves? You know, while we are at home more, we want to grow ourselves and, and what we can learn. I am learning some new technical skills. And uh, once I master virtual backgrounds and in Zoom, I'll be pretty excited about it. 
I bet you already know how. So congratulations. Thank you for those of you who are doing such amazing things to help others, whether you're sharing what you your time and talent has to give through Facebook Lives, through Zoom calls, through uh, if you're a nurse and you're on the front line or a, or a police officer during these difficult times on the front line of this horrible situation, I salute you and I thank you. I thank you for taking care of our community and I thank you for all your hard work and sacrifice that you give to help make your community better. So what can we all do to make our community better? Whether it's just take time to visit an aging neighbor and encourage them or not. We are resilient, my friends, and this too will pass. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate your time, and I can't wait to share some great resources with you next week with my friend Chris Steckling. Thank you so much, and have a great week. Leave me some comments, and uh, we'll talk soon. Take care. God bless.